Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Wedding Photo Podcast. This is episode 66. Uh, it's going to be a really great episode. Uh, really had fun with this guest. I'll get into that in just a moment. I uh, just want to remind everybody that if you are, if you want to reach out to me, you can find me on Instagram at Wedding Photo Podcast. You can also find me on Twitter at Del Toro Photo, and you can join our Facebook group. All the links are in the show notes. Uh, the Facebook group is a growing community of photographers, just like yourself. We go on there. We talk about different topics. Uh, people ask questions that I bring up on on the podcast all the time. Uh, just this last week, someone brought up the topic about what kind of lenses uh, people use for their weddings, whether they're primes or zooms, and everybody kind of chimed in. And it was it was a uh, it was cool to see what everybody's shooting with. There's definitely a lot of people shooting favoring 35 85 that's like my favorite combo uh but it's good to hear everybody's perspective on what they shoot and why they use that to shoot uh so come join the facebook group it's a lot of fun um i also want to share that i've i've partnered up with narrative publisher um if you haven't heard of them they're a desktop app that you can use uh for blogging it it helps you blog faster uh what i when i jump on uh narrative publisher i import my folder it imports all the all the photos for an engagement or a wedding that i'm using and i'm able to create a really uh, really nice looking blog uh, using their app in in minutes. I'm, I think I, I can produce an entire blog in like 20, 30 minutes and um, I get it out on my website after, you know, typing up everything about the blog and the SEO. My turnaround is like 45 minutes. Uh, my personal turnaround is like 45 minutes for a wedding blog and it used to be like hours. It used to take hours to produce just one blog so um, they I partnered up with them I really love their product I wouldn't be you know talking about it if I didn't um, but I teamed up with them and um, if you decide you want to use narrative you can try it for free but if you decide you want to use it you can get 15% off using my code del Toro photo um, follow the affiliate the affiliate link in the show notes um, you'll be supporting this podcast and myself and if you uh, and another way to support this podcast is by giving me a five-star rating and leaving me a review i think it helps uh, other people find this podcast and uh, please share this podcast with your friends if you think this is something that uh, uh, that would benefit other photographers um, i'd love to you know uh, I, I i would really appreciate if you did that so we are still currently waiting for our first wedding. It's coming up pretty quick. Uh, still just working on our marketing and advertising. It's been going really well. Uh, all the effort that we've been putting into it the last couple of weeks, it's really paying off. We've been getting inquiries. We've been booking. And uh, if you haven't listened to it, I released... Uh, an episode where I just talk specifically about uh, our current marketing and advertisement uh, advertisement strategies. You can go check that out. Um, but yeah, we're just doing that. Um, and we also recently had uh, Jen and Stephen Van Elk. Stephen has a podcast, A Wedding Photo Hangover. That's kind of how we became friends. And, uh, and together they have a podcast called uh, Wedded Pod where they talk about, you know, relationships and marriage. And, um, and they're, they're really just a great couple that we've become really good friends with. Uh, last year they came to California. They're from Indiana. They came to California and we got to hang out and meet and we got closer. And well, they came down to shoot the wedding that they were, uh, they had planned to shoot here in California and we got to hang out with them again and it was really fun. This time, Stephen and I actually sat down and recorded uh, a podcast episode that um, I might release uh, pretty soon as well. Um, but yeah, that's all we've been doing, just kind of focusing on our business, hanging out with some friends right now that we have some time before uh, the wedding uh, season starts for us. On today's episode, I am really excited for this guest. Uh, my really good friend, Leo Aguirre, came over and we talked about his business. Uh, Leo is a wedding DJ. We actually met through a mutual friend, our, our friend Alex, who's also a wedding DJ. He was on one of the first episodes of the Wedding Photo Podcast. Um, but I met Leo through him and um, D, uh, and Leo has DJed for us for several like family events and we've had uh, we've had the opportunity to work with him many, many times. He's our, he's our, he's, he's the 
the lead, he's the DJ that we refer to everybody when they're looking for a DJ because honestly he's he's just the best like everything that he does uh the way uh the way he talks to his clients you know the just the vibes that he puts out the music that he does the way he emcees he's really really good at what he does and i wanted to ask him to come on the podcast because he has a really great uh, business mindset and he's always progressing and always uh you know trying to trying to figure out ways on progressing right which we're all we're all trying to do so sitting down with him and talking to him about business uh there's just so many great take uh takeaways from this episode i think you're really going to enjoy it and um he's really just uh, a genuine guy and one of the friendliest persons that you could ever um um, have in your circle he's a really great dude so uh, without any further ado i want to present to you uh leo aguirre so you listen to a podcast about djing uh well different types of podcasts uh as far as uh the stuff that I do in, in the industry yeah. that is catered to just work or, or motivation. Uh, I've listened to yours. Uh, there's this one, uh, I think it's called like the <laughs> DJ podcast yeah. or something like that. And it's, a, uh, it's just catered to, to, to people that do the mobile stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes they'll talk about how to get more reviews. Uh, what do you do to follow up with your clients yeah. after the fact, you know, to kind of create, uh, that uh testimonial platform Mm -hmm. on whatever platform that you have you know and uh that's kind of where i'm at right now you know because uh as far as my business and uh well i mean let's if we want to just kind of backtrack a little bit yeah uh i've been djing for about almost a decade now um probably weddings uh and uh you know corporate stuff uh, quinceañeras and all that stuff uh for about full time maybe a good good five years i've worked with other uh companies i finally have my own company been representing myself for about two two and a half years Mm now um and things are kind of uh busy when it's busy but then you know there's times where you know it's uh uh it can it can be slow yeah you know uh i just went through one of those moments right now um but i do uh feel that you know uh during the slow time like yeah. you kind of have to still figure out things to do yeah. to kind of yeah. keep yourself motivated because it can well there's be... a lot of stuff you can't do when you're super busy so that's that's yeah. true yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We, we we don't have weddings right now till march mm-hmm. and we've been using this whole time just to push our business because I was telling you earlier that Mm -hmm. we didn't, we barely advertised at all last year. We didn't push out a single blog. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, there was no consistency on our Instagram. It was just, I was just whenever I, I guess like thought about it and Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking about it a lot and, uh, and it actually hurt us. So right now that we don't have any weddings till March, we've been, we've been pushing our, our marketing and advertising like crazy. Um, and as far as, a, a <clears throat> advertisement for you, that's just content in general or, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah Cause yeah. I was thinking like advertisement, like, yeah. uh, you go to Yelp and you do the Yelp ads <coughs> oh, yeah. or, or you're on. No, we haven't, we haven't paid for a single thing. Mm-hmm. Everything that, that I'm doing right now is just to get in front of people's eyes and that's it. That's, yeah. that's my strategy. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm posting specifically, uh, photos twice a week. I'm posting blogs like twice a week cause we're still catching up on our blogs from like a year and a half ago okay so i'm catching up our website with all our recent stuff um and i'm using every week to just push that stuff out so on tuesday i post a photo on wednesday i post a blog on tuesday or friday i post another photo um and then those same mornings i'll come up with like uh last week we did um at IG stories where we just asked people to ask us any questions to learn about us. And I spent like, it took me like half a day to just answer all those questions. It took me half a day. Cause, um, I use this, uh, app called, uh, uh, man, I always forget, uh, spark, spark post. Spark post. And, What's that? um, spark post is just this app where you can create, um, it's through Adobe here. I'll show it to you. 
it's through Adobe. And so what I, what I was doing is, um, you know, someone would ask a question like, Hey, where did you guys meet? So I actually would go in here and I can look up, uh, just templates, right? So let's uh -huh. say I just type love and there's a bunch of love templates. Mm -hmm. And let's say I like this one right here, right? I want to use this and, um, you can, you can make it for any type of post. So when you go to resize, see, it has like Instagram, okay. um, whatever. So here's Instagram stories. It sizes it up for you. And now I can use the the fonts that are in here. So let's say I pick this one because I really love this font. Um, I can just click on it, edit it, put whatever I want. And then it changes it. I can resize. Dude, it's like so easy to do everything, you know? And right here I can just put a different picture. You know what I mean? Like I can. Yeah. The possibilities are, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I can definitely see, you, see? you know, the, the, uh, it, it makes something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Cause so, I, I've always wondered how people do that, you know, yeah. the, uh, on a phone, especially on a phone. So this just makes it really easy and see, so I have all these ones. I was answering questions and, and these are the ones that I made. Look at, oh, okay. all, look at all those. And then that the, I was using these to answer it. So when I, you know, when you go uh, in to answer the question, you can pick a photo to put behind the question. Yeah. It would be these. And I was actually answering the questions on here. So like, um, someone asked about, um, what we were planning on doing with Gabriel's YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I literally answered the question. And when I went on to Instagram and put this in my story, I put uh -huh. the question up here in the corner and then the answer was right there and it looks like nice, you know, and people were actually asking like, how are you creating this stuff? Yeah. Uh, I just, dis cool. I discovered this, um, spark post spark uh, when post. I was at Adobe max. I see. I got to write that down <laughs> because, uh. You're telling me about all these cool little <laughs> little things, man. So, it, and and I was telling you earlier, like all these things, like it took time to figure out this stuff, right? Like, um, I also got inspired to do this because Maria, she does all her Instagram stories on the day of the wedding, and yeah. she uses different apps to make it look cool. She doesn't just take a photo and post it; like she she gets all creative with That's it. That's a job within itself. It is. Man. It really is. <laughs> so, so I wanted to stay in line with that. When whenever I do stories and stuff on our Instagram, I didn't want to just throw it out there because she doesn't do that so mm -hmm. i'm trying to make the extra effort and uh and and i'm just using all the stuff that's in there so yeah. like the questions uh you can do a poll you've done polls right like hey what what kind of music do you i think yeah. you did one uh recently right about like um what kind of music you prefer or something like that i think but a, a lot of the time see okay so since we're on the topic of like instagram and <coughs> yeah. my content yeah. uh my my social media <clears throat> is kind of i would say it's maybe like 60 percent personal 40 percent mm -hmm. business yeah. uh and and even by personal i don't post a lot of personal yeah, yeah, things yeah. on there yeah. it's very limited yeah but people get a glimpse of your yeah, life yeah 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 you know like they like to see pictures of my niece yeah. uh my girlfriend yeah. or, or just me going out you know like yeah. going to concerts or just traveling yeah. you know um and then there's the the, the promotional advertisement yeah. side of yeah. it um Dude, I I gotta step up my game. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Yeah. It's just seeing stuff like that. Yeah. I'm like, dude, it catches people. Well, eyes and you and, can uh, keep it personal, right? Yeah. So like, we we'd kind of do the same thing. We share a lot of our personal life on our Instagram, mm -hmm. and and so when when I go on there and I'm like, what can I do today? Oh, I'll just I'll I'll let everybody I'll let I'll let our audience drive our content. Mm -hmm. So I did the questions thing, mm -hmm. and everyone wants to know, you know, certain things about different aspects of our life, and and that that gave me a chance to be creative with the content that i was putting out there so same with you like you know if you want to ask a question like hey man what, what do you guys prefer do you guys prefer hip-hop or country like that can be you can turn that into a really cool post and you can and you can put the like the poll right yeah and then you can share like the poll results at the end of the day mm -hmm. or you can even share uh some of the messages you're getting from people because of these because some some people just throw funny stuff back at you yeah, you know what i mean yeah. like uh -huh. you know like i'd never touch country and then you can share that like oh this guy this guy's this guy's a fool man he's just playing you know he's just throwing <laughs> yeah. these jokes so uh, -huh. uh you can let the audience kind of drive your content you have the the little slider you know mm -hmm. like what do you guys think of this yeah you know this uh whatever whatever you post and then you can put the slider and everyone like you know swipes it all the way to the right or whatever yeah i was also thinking i was actually talking to <laughs> one of our mutual friends uh alex ortiz yeah. uh he uh I, I told him uh that uh uh, one thing that I can probably do is at the end of the month or at the beginning of the month, recap the last month yep. uh, with the formalities of, the, of some of these songs, yeah. you know, see what people are choosing yeah. and whatnot and kind of just, you know, 
inform people yeah. like this is what's out there yeah. just in case if you don't know uh what songs are popular because yeah. I, I feel like with uh especially in the whole music aspect mm -hmm. of a wedding i mean most people go i mean most people plan a wedding once yeah. so there's not like a lot of content for yeah. for the average person to kind of you know uh, be familiar with some of these songs yeah. you know um um, but you know, it, I think like how you said, it's just yeah. creating content yeah. to kind of just get people to, and, and in the, to me in the music, you know, there's tons of trends in the music industry. So there's so many opportunities for you to talk about music that's, that's been coming out now yeah. or like one thing that comes to mind, me being someone that doesn't know anything about DJing, mm -hmm. but we go to weddings and <clears throat> you guys play, there's very specific songs that are played at every wedding, right? Yeah. Like the, mm -hmm. the. Uh, uh the cupid shuffle or yeah, yeah. The, the cupid okay. shuffle so okay. let's say the cupid yeah. shuffle uh -huh. so now you can create a post where you're like uh, like let's be honest folks what do you guys really think about the cupid shuffle yeah. would you have it at your wedding and and it's you, gonna be like 50 50 yeah, yeah yeah but you have but but you have clients or potential yeah. clients that are engaging in that mm -hmm. and they're gonna start following you just because of the things that you're constantly posting so sometimes it's not important whether mm -hmm. that question is important or not yeah it's a, it's just another opportunity to get to get yourself in front of people's faces right. and paying attention to you yeah and that's what we've been doing with all our posts yeah. and i've i've noticed that in the last two months just being in front of people's faces consistently yeah we've been getting way more inquiries than we were you know well we barely got any last year because we were advertising at all and now we're just getting uh inquiries like every other day that's good yeah. man that's yeah. really good yeah I'm so to me it's not it's not yeah. even you know, don't, I would say don't like, don't stress about what kind of content you mm -hmm. need to put out there. Just make it as simple as possible and just give yourself a reason to uh, post something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and your audience is there, man. You've already built an audience and they, they want to, they just want to see you. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm sure you have clients from the past that follow you because they really, yeah. you did their wedding and they love you and you're probably like, more yeah, or less friends the, with them yeah, now i mean that's give kinda, them a reason to to keep wanting to follow yeah, you you that's, know uh i mean that's kind of like why we're here right now in a way mm -hmm. you know i was working a wedding and you were working the same wedding and yeah. you kind of you know uh, alex introduced us yeah. and it kind of just hit it off from yeah. that from so that. alex is uh he's been on the podcast he was like one of my first guests yeah 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 you and told me. and he um he used to uh you basically took over his business right yeah in a way i did yeah he let's kinda, talk about that tell, tell me um, how that came about well i first started uh playing <laughs> at clubs i was uh a uh, man it was a monday through sunday type yeah. of deal where if i wasn't out djing i was out uh networking if i wasn't out networking yeah. i was out partying you know i was i was young yeah um and then i think one of our mutual friends that was also kind of in the club scene uh introduced me to alex saying mm -hmm. that he needed a dj alex has been running his uh uh his uh, wedding uh mobile uh operation for i i, I forgot how long but uh yeah. he needed someone to kind of you know to to help him out yeah and um yeah i did uh i can't remember what the first event that i did for him but uh we started working uh weddings together and i saw how enthusiastic he was yeah. and like he has charisma and he really does, it was man. just he's good yeah and it was just like a different it just kind of hit me like whoa like this guy's good at this you yeah. know and uh you know the the story i always share with people I, i've probably told you before but there was mm -hmm. uh, you might have even been there man maybe but there's this uh there was this he's really good at being on on social media and oh, showing yeah. his face <laughs> definitely and it was i want to say it was snapchat but there was um there was a snapchat where clearly he was at a wedding and he was doing all these snaps and then the next snapchat he's in a room and there, everything's just tile and you're like wait is he in the bathroom <laughs> and in front of the camera it, it, he, and you don't even see his face it's just it's just the camera to the wall yeah. and then he brings up the mic and yeah. you're like what is he doing and he's like are you guys all ready to have a good time and then outside the room you hear yeah and he's like are you guys ready to party and they're like yeah dude he's in the bathroom <laughs> Which looks like he's taking a poop or something. Yeah, I'm rocking and he's the crowd. And, yeah, and, and he's, he's just like hyping them, the dude. Yeah. 
<laughs> anywhere, anytime. Yeah, like, yeah. My man and, can do it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Then that just goes to show, man. He was really good, and and the fact that he was willing to even post that online, yeah. it's like, dude, you you love him for that. Yeah. You know? So yeah, you're it, he's very charismatic. Yeah. Which also, I mean, I don't know if I would do that, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't do something like that. But it, it, it fits him. Though. Yeah, it just shows you what kind of guy he is. Like yeah. he's just a fun. He's a fun yeah. dude, and I, I I love working weddings with him, and especially when I uh, first started. Um, I had that, you know, mentality of uh, I, I'm the artist. I'm yeah. the one that came from the clubs. You can't tell me what yeah. to do. You yeah. know, I'm going to play uh, whatever I want to hear. And uh, I remember there was one wedding in particular that we did. And I was struggling with the crowd because yeah. uh, I just wasn't playing relevant timeless mm-hmm. wedding bangers yeah. you know i was playing like club stuff you yeah. know fairly fairly new club yeah. stuff and i'm like i don't understand why they're not dancing it yeah. wasn't comprehending in my mind and uh i forgot what song he played oh he played a, a miley cyrus party in the usa yeah and i at that point like i'm and excuse my french but i'm like fuck miley cyrus like yeah. i don't i don't like yeah i don't like <laughs> hannah montana you know I don't what like, dude she's the best bro dude, i just I'm just kidding I, no it's just one of those things man and but you know what i've grown yeah. to to love this song because it's a, it's just a go-to song where uh you can definitely uh if you lose a crowd you can pl- you can drop that song and yeah and get them yeah, going yeah and then uh, it, it was that that kind of triggered me to kind of not have an ego yeah. and 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 just be open yeah. to to play what when people, you saw how well that worked yeah to, to and play how, like how and then I think ever since then it's just been like a a, a journey dude of just accepting everybody's <clears throat> advice yeah. uh, I also worked with another company too um, uh, at the same time that I was working with Alex's uh, Final Touch and and with the other one I, I there was a lot of stuff that I loved too but there was also a lot of stuff that you know I feel like I probably wouldn't do in my company yeah. and the same thing goes with Alex's but um, that relationship you know I mean till this day we're we're friends he kind of like paved the way for me yeah. even on the back end just learning how to manage clients uh how to approach them how mm-hmm. to how to pitch how to sell to them uh and 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 even uh i know he talked about it too but the crm yeah man, uh you said it wasn't for you um uh, which I, I i do respect yeah. you know it's the same thing with uh you know just giving people advice or just yeah. telling them you know you know eventually you'll either do it or you don't it's not for everyone it's okay Um, uh i've always said if uh you know if if we there's there's probably going to be a time where i would want to use a crm yeah we don't have a ton of weddings we shoot like 15 to 20 weddings a year okay and to me that's i i can manage it on, yeah okay on my, my, with my own uh, thumb you know yeah, what i mean yeah. so that's the only reason i don't yeah right uh, right now yeah. i have about uh <clears throat> a thousand no no nah, dude i have month. about 30 <laughs> 35 like potential uh accumulated inquiries yeah and maybe i've closed 30 of them right now for weddings for weddings yeah and that's just weddings but you do yeah. like events and stuff too yeah yeah there's a uh I do I'm corporate doing, events. Yeah, corporate events. I'm doing one of those motivational ones for yeah. uh, for like a real estate company <clears throat> in April. Um, and those are cool too, but it's also like a different environment, yeah, yeah. man. It's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. You, you're not going to play wedding bangers at a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at a corporate <laughs> yeah. like type of event. You, the vibes are always different, yeah. man. Um, well, tell me a little bit about uh, how you started off. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure people have heard this already, yeah. but I haven't heard this. Uh, you becoming a, a photographer, man. Oh, a photographer? Yeah. Oh, man. I um, <laughs> Yeah, I've talked about it a ton of times. Mm-hmm. I I, uh, uh, I went to film school, mm-hmm. and I when I graduated, I went to Los Angeles, and I was working with I was working with um, my uh, my roommate. He was a my good friend, him, and another guy. We kind of had like our own little production team yeah. going, you know. Mm-hmm. And so when we graduated, uh, while we were in school, we were we were acting as producers for other people's projects. Yeah. And uh, when we graduated, we we decided, oh, let's you know, let's kind of try to do that, produce our own work. And the way we ran it was, uh, my my buddy George, he was our cinematographer. That's what he did while we were uh, in school. He learned everything, camera and every project that we w- did personally. He was our 
camera guy. Like we never had to touch that stuff. That's all he studied. And to this day, he's like a really great cinematographer. And then our friend JP, he was like the writer of, of the crew, right? Like he learned script writing and he was really good at, at knowing all the different aspects of, of writing of what a good script looked like. And so he focused on that stuff. <clears throat> and I, you know, I was like the, I, I guess the more outspoken one. So whenever we did a personal project, I kind of took the role of director um, because I wasn't afraid to like say stuff or talk to people or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I took that role and together, the three of us, we all produced. So yeah. we all did the scheduling and mapped stuff out and rented stuff and got insurance and all those things. Like we knew how to work, work together. So we graduated and we're trying to we're trying to create our own little production company. We did a couple of commercials here and there, but we graduated in 07. It was like a really uh, bad time for the economy. It was really hard to get jobs. We were all working uh, different positions mm -hmm. in in the industry. How old are you, at, by the way? I'm 34. 34. Okay. Yeah. So you you're four years older than me. Yeah, um, and that was back in 2007. We, yeah, gra yeah. we graduated 2007. So I'm just freshly out of high school. You know, <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Graduated 2007. Like, we're just in there. Yeah, we're out there yeah. trying to grind it out, uh -huh. and uh, it was just really hard, man. And we were young. Like I graduated at 21. Mm -hmm. So um, it just it was really hard to keep up on work, and I ended up uh, moving back home. Uh, cause we just, it, we were just, I was struggling too much, like financially and all this stuff. So it was really hard. Um, and I also, I also did not like the industry. We were working a bunch of jobs, like as uh, assistants, you know, production mm -hmm. assistants and everybody in the industry was just like super mean. It, 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 and I, I just found that it wasn't for me. Right. Um, a lot of people stayed and, and hustled it out. And there's people that I got friends from college that are like in the union now and still doing it. And they held on, you know, more power to them. It, it, it just turned out that I wasn't enjoying that type of work. Yeah. Um, but while we were out there, uh, when we would do like auditions for the projects that we were working on, I, um, you know, these uh, actors would come in with uh, their headshots and some of them were really, really bad. And um, I got the idea to make a little extra cash just doing headshots for, for you know, mm -hmm. a, uh, actors and stuff. And, huh. and I started taking photos. Did you, do anybody <clears throat> recognize uh, recognize? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was just a I had book. to ask. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so that I started with photography that, I mean, I've always had, uh, I've always been behind a camera. I was always taking pictures, but I never really considered it being a profession. Even mm -hmm. when I went to that school, like I didn't go to school for photography, you know? Yeah. Um, so I picked it up after the fact. And then, um, when I came back here, I actually got a job at a photo studio and that really, uh, kind of, that took over my life, right? Like the photo studio, we did all kinds of photography and I was surrounded by, uh, a ton of photographers who did different types of photography. There was yeah. wedding photographers, portrait or portrait photographers, product photographers. Yeah. And so I just, I ended up surrounding myself with this world of, of photography and photographers and that kind of paved, paved the way to, you know, me wanting to do weddings. Um, I had a friend who he was much older. He used to do weddings and he wasn't doing them anymore. Like he kind of retired it, you know, he was, he was like in his late forties mm -hmm. and he actually, his friend hired him to do a wedding and he asked me to come along and he knew I wanted to really try it out. And, uh, I was pretty confident in my skills at the time. So he ended up, uh, telling me like, Hey, why don't you like run it? And, uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Like if they're, you're doing something wrong or whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, back yeah, and chill. yeah. <laughs> let pretty you, much, pretty much. That's what he did. <laughs> but it was great for me. Cause I, I, I had the drive and the confidence to be like, oh, that's, that would be really awesome. Like mm -hmm. I have him there, so I don't have anything to worry about any, and, and I get to run the day. Mm -hmm. And that just started it off, man. I, I, I did that and, uh, and, um, and I just enjoyed doing weddings and it kind of just, yeah, that takes yeah. some balls, bro. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do that. My, my first wedding was a train wreck. Uh, luckily it was for, a. Uh, a family member yeah. and I, yeah. I i mean i didn't i think i made maybe like 50 bucks <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it was like one of those things that yeah. uh uh i i didn't it took me some a few gigs to kind of get, get into it and get comfortable oh dude I, and even right now bro yeah. i'm still like open to stuff learning and yeah. figuring it out but i think even with uh just music in general yeah. if you if you pay attention to <clears throat> to a decade 
and everything that was listened to let's say the last decade up to up to right now um it's changed uh, i wouldn't say dramatically but it has changed Uh, it's just uh, like mainstream music hip-hop is not the same as it was back then but i'm I'm talking like an old person now you know but if you think about it it's always been it's always been like that Uh, yeah remember in, in the 90s with the uh when uh like gangster rap came out yeah uh and everybody in that was an adult, uh, you know, that was was living somewhat privileged, yeah. thought that it was ignorant music, yeah. or, you know, yeah. or explicit yeah. lyrics and stuff. And it's the same thing with the music right now, because a lot of the stuff that you know kids are listening to is super ignorant, you know. Mm-hmm. And me as an adult, I'm thinking like, you kids should not be listening <laughs> yeah. to that, you yeah. know. Yeah. But then I was too, you yeah, know, at yeah, that yeah. age. But it, it's crazy because I always have to kind of, you know, think keep, about that, yeah, and put yeah. myself in that situation. Yeah, it's true. Um, and that honestly just makes me a better dj or even person man just in general just uh uh to be open to you know to people suggest dude i did a sweet 16 like two weeks ago and uh it was tough dude uh you have to go in and out of these like songs and and were they asking for like some weird stuff you didn't even dude yeah (laughs) i was was struggling man it was uh and and, but it also made me kind of just open to the idea of like okay so this is kind of what's popping right now getting that rhythm i needed to get slapped in the face a little bit you know because i was getting a little too comfortable playing uh for a certain type of crowd and uh it for me it's either even in the clubs bro i I think right now the bangers uh depending on where you go like if you're going to la it's it's the same stuff that the kids are listening yeah. to um but i think everywhere else in general like the club stuff i think the stuff uh i'm, I'm saying stuff a lot but uh the music that is is fire right yeah. now is uh it's all the early 2000s mid 2000s that decade and even the stuff up to like 2015 16 Mm -hmm. it's all just a little mixture of everything but that music right i think right now is what's uh the timeless for our our era you know and then um and now if we're going to the weddings uh i really do think blink 182 this is their year the wedding you yeah know, i'm gonna be dropping more blink when oh really they're yeah. new from their new album yeah. or what nah dude all the old stuff all the dude. old all stuff the, no you can't do new stuff yeah <laughs> no, dude man. i'm a big blink fan i love yeah. that i keep up with it. they yeah. just dropped an album at the end of this last year they they did I, I don't know how i feel about uh uh the the new lead singer yeah. Alkaline trail i saw yeah. him live yeah. and it just yeah I, but you know what though? i'm all about it man uh, you know yeah. why why because Are, alkaline but, trio was my second favorite band oh, so the fact that he came in and took uh tom's place i was like this is a dream come true it man. yeah it works, <laughs> it and, works. I, and i love his voice already yeah so i i'm all in man yeah so, it's a and, and mind you i was a tom DeLong fan yeah you know so when he left it was a bummer yeah but dude life goes on they're still working it out they're yeah, still they're playing still music they're still playing music tom's making his music yeah, and, yeah. and his stuff is yeah. really good too yeah. so and i like it, really all his uh, alien conspiracy theories mm-hmm. too yep yeah. yep <laughs> pretty wild they're out yeah. there yeah i met him <laughs> you did I, yeah oh, yeah that's cool my my friends they they produced uh this film that uh tom um uh, Tom uh, basically not wrote the music for, but they it was their project mm-hmm. more or less. Yeah, my friends produced this film for um, this director who's actually like he's he's making a bunch of movies that you would know now. Uh, uh, yeah, they produced this film. It's called Love, and it's okay. about an astronaut that gets stuck out in uh, space. I was I was gonna you know say does it have any like yeah you know. oh no for sure it's <laughs> super spacey would, yeah yeah, yeah. The only way he'd put his name and, on it. <laughs> yeah and so um he produced that film and uh it's so funny man because it, it was it, for the longest time it was on netflix if you can find it my name is in those credits and think Dude. you know because uh, so my friends produced it and when i say my friends it was literally like two guys mm-hmm. and the whole first five years of making this film like me and my buddy Drew we were the ones that would come out and and be like the hands for it. There wasn't a crew of people. Oh, dang. And the film, it like I think it got awards. It's a really great film. Oh man. Uh the director, he he filmed the first five years. That's when we were involved. And then I I wanna say I, I you could probably find this online. I think they like ran out of like money or something. Like they mm-hmm. didn't really it, it didn't take off. And the dir- the director, um, he ended up building the 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 whole spaceship thing in his parents' um, driveway. Oh, dang. and he finished the film there. And the film is dope, dude. It's a yeah. pretty it's a pretty good it's film. Called, it's called Love. It's called Love. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah that's another thing that and, I'm and here like let me see uh, i'll tell you the director because there's some movies he's doing now he's gotten uh he's he's getting up there now his name is let's see william eubank here he is and some of the films he's made are the the signal uh there's one coming out uh this year underwater oh, and okay. there's love um and these were hmm. all all his the signal was with um uh, what's his name dude they uh it it doesn't ring a bell but it does uh you know i feel like i've seen it with uh lawrence uh fishburn okay and then the newest one the underwater is uh god what's her name dude i'm terrible with names uh Kristen stewart okay so he's doing some big stuff now, man. Yeah. And and when uh when we were working on that film, he he used to work for Panavision, mm-hmm. and so uh he got attached to this film. Somehow met Tom, and then um and then he was using the stuff from work, basically Panavision. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, to to create the films. Um, but anyways, we went out to the desert to do a bunch of steam. The the entire movie, like uh, uh Tom and the guys, they weren't involved in in the movie itself, mm-hmm. but they produced all the music okay. for the entire movie. All so right. it uh, the way I remember explaining it was it was the movie was one giant um music video. Okay. Hmm. And with with like a whole album or something like that. Okay. Um but we went out to the desert and uh I remember my buddy came into uh, the little RV that we were renting and we were out there. We were out there for a couple of days and he knew I was a huge Tom fan and he came in and he was like, "Hey man, I uh I got to tell you something. I don't want you to freak out, but uh Tom and the guys uh um what's the name of the man? AVA. Uh, yeah. Angels and Airwaves. Angels and Airwaves. That they're they're all mm-hmm. coming out today, and I was like, "Oh, cool." He's like, "Yeah, they just want to see what we're working on and everything." I was like, <laughs> "All right," and he's like, "So don't freak out." I was like, "I'm I'm fine. I'm good," you know. <laughs> but I was like a big Tom geek, and yeah. he knew it. He was my roommate. He was one of my yeah. roommates in college. At cool, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's like at cool. I've like sure been enough, there before, <laughs> dude. And it's like it, it was like a movie in itself, dude. We saw like, oh, here they come, and we're out in the in the salt flats, right? Yeah. So you see like this mirage of three vehicles, like in the wavy air, like making yeah. their way towards you. It was a motorcycle, a 1950s Chevy pickup, and like a Porsche or something like that. And we were just like, what the what the <laughs> fuck is going on, man? <laughs> and they they all pull up, they all look dope, right? Yeah. They got their dope cars and everything. And uh, we just continue shooting for the day. So, like, I think we met them. We all shook hands. And then uh, they they were doing their thing, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, I took a break and went to the trailer. And I walked in into the RV. And I went to the back to, like, go to my backpack. And in the back, there's, like, um, there's an aisleway and then a couch on either side. And uh, I go, I turn to the back. No one's in the RV. I turn back there. And Tom's just, like, chilling back there. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, what's up, man? And he gets up real quick. He's like, hey, man, what's up? I'm Tom. And I'm like, of course, I know who you are. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. oh, that's cool, man. I'm Ulysses. And he's like, oh, Ulysses, that's such a cool name. And uh, and I was like, sorry, I just got to grab some. He's like, oh no, come in. And and um and I went to my backpack to pull some stuff out. And we were just talking about uh, random stuff. And dude, Tom is exactly who like like how I pictured him. Like he, he was literally there geeking out on alien conspiracies. He, he, yeah. he had his, when I met him, he had like an alien conspiracy book on him. <laughs> <laughs> and that is like who he is today, yeah. you know? So that's cool, man. So yeah. that was a, that was a fun little story. Yeah. Good, good for, uh, for him. And, uh, and kind of just keeping things going after the fact, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I guess he just kind of grew out of working with, you know that bad yeah i've heard all kinds know. of stories but i mean you don't really know unless yeah. you're there you yeah. know so as as long as they're all still making, making music, music and yeah. i'm sure they're they're pretty yeah. happy it, it's kind of hard for me to kind of get into like <clears throat> say if one of the bands i liked back in the day yeah. you know uh, like i'm a huge rockhead yeah. you know so say uh, i know i just saw something with a a, a newfound glory i, I, re- I really really like newfound yeah. glory uh um, or even I, I can go the, with the pop punk side yeah. or I can go to like the system of a dance. Yeah. Um, if anybody comes out with like a new album, it's kind of hard for me to, to sit down and listen to it yeah. just because most music nowadays, like I, and I, I, I realize I do yeah. have to kind of create my own playlist yeah, yeah, to kind of yeah. keep me motivated to listen yeah. and open to new things. But right now, dude, I feel like with the work load yeah. music, I'm listening to music all the yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, 
You can't. <laughs> yeah, unless unless it's like a live yeah. show. Yeah, unless it's like a live. I mean, show. I'm I'm the same way. Most of the music I listened to back in the day, I could barely stand any of mm-hmm. it today. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah. well, uh, that's what. Well, no, for me, it's that. That's my go to, dude. Yeah. I, I I when it comes to the new music, I'll I'll listen to it, but it's uh kind of hard for me <clears> to kind of find out whether it i mean this usually does happen when you yeah. music regardless because when you were a kid you didn't know you were listening to a timeless banger yeah uh, when you were a kid listening yeah. to it you know that now because yeah. it's time has passed yeah. you know also you yeah. grow into different stuff too right like i mean just just as like a person you weren't the same person you were yeah. 10 years ago yeah, definitely. Uh, i feel like that uh mm-hmm. music wise i used to i still like and appreciate a lot of the stuff i listened to before yeah but like i used to listen to a lot of death metal you know, <laughs> that, that was cool. I, I listened to rap and i listened to death metal That's and cool. and now i still like a lot of that death metal but man it just doesn't do it for me yeah. you know and uh-huh. i'm listening to a lot of indie music yeah. it's just more chill yeah. it's I feel like it evolved with me. That's mm-hmm. more or less the person I yeah. am today. So mm-hmm. it fits more, you know, yeah. I enjoy it a lot more. Yeah. I, I've been listening to a lot of reggae, new yeah. and old. Yeah. Uh, You've been going to some reggae shows too. Dude, yeah. I just came back from One Love. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Man. Yeah. One a, Love, is that the one right here? In, in Long Twin? Beach. Oh, okay. It was okay. Long Beach. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I went Friday. <clears throat> Headliners were uh, uh, the Dirty Heads. They're dope, man. Yeah. Uh, if you Have you heard of them? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you like them at all? Um, what do I you mean, think about them? Honest I'm, opinion. I'm, I'm just not. I don't listen to a lot of yeah. reggae. Oh, yeah. Okay. But I have a cousin mm-hmm. who goes to every festival. Yeah, There's one like dude. up in San Francisco. He goes to there's, every there's year. Like diehard. Seattle. I get it, he's he's I get it, he's though. diehard yeah. man. Yeah. So I, I see I see uh, yeah. him posting about all that stuff too. Yeah, it's cool, man. And all that music is just love and good vibes, man. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm honestly all about yeah. that. I implement that into my sales pitch. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I I don't tell people. Uh, obviously it's already uh, implemented into when you're looking for my yeah. services I'm not I'm not gonna repeat it unless you tell me that yeah. I'm a DJ and an MC you know mm-hmm. uh, I'm a vibe creator you know yeah. I create the vibe and that's what I do for you regardless of whether uh, I'm the one that's doing it with putting my personal touch or if you don't want me to put my personal touch I'm an expert in creating your vibe you know and uh, that's also uh, I use that as a sales pitch and I use it as a uh uh, because i stay i I live by it dude it's just one of those things where and especially with the music that's uh with that kind of music uh uh, it kind of promotes that you know like like let's just ride the wave and and yes we can have a direction but at the same time you know um we'll we'll get there when we get there that's the way i kind of you, know, you should use that man yeah i just wrote it down you're yeah. a vibe creator i yeah. love that dude yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's it's honestly and uh it, i i honestly uh, remember using it literally I, <clears throat> I pitched to a client on sunday and that's the first thing that came out and i they understood what i meant by that and they were kind of like intrigued by it it's just the idea of like I set the mood for you, yeah, you know, yeah. and um, you can tell me to play. You can give me a playlist of yeah. all your songs, but it's up to me to kind of figure out in which order yeah, you want yeah. me to play them, you know. And uh, and if especially if you give me a list of like 200 songs yeah. and they're all over the place, you got some slow songs, you got some. I will I go there and I have to break that playlist up, yeah, you know, yeah. um, I try to separate them right from the get go because it saves me some time. So yeah. I'll tell them. Uh, if you want me to play a certain type of music for a dinner, you know, like yeah. we can, uh, I have an app where they can uh, import their Spotify playlist. If not, they can actually search YouTube on yeah. the app and and look for for the songs and and create the playlist themselves. And uh, I mean, the same thing goes for dancing. But I think uh, the way uh, it it is, it just all depends on the energy yeah. in the room. Yeah. If if it looks like the crowd, like say if I'm trying to hype them up and they're just not getting there. You know, a, probably a slow song is probably going to be a good thing yeah. to to kind of get them going. You know, you can't just you know pick a, a Cupid Shuffle or, yeah. or or Montel Jordan. This is yeah. how we do it. You know, yeah. which are you know timeless. I'm I'm tired of all those songs, but <laughs> <laughs> they're they're part of the yeah. you know they're part yeah. of the job, man. Yeah. And and uh, I realize that too. It's uh it's I don't have an ego yeah. as much anymore when it comes to this. I love how you're saying that that uh you know you've you've uh, you've learned to be open minded about that stuff. Yeah. And and it's it's funny to hear you say that because as long as I've and and you personally have uh, emceed like some personal parties that we've had, mm-hmm. um, we've worked at a ton of weddings together, and as long as I've known you, 
Um, one thing that I always tell people about is like, you know how to roll out music, like how to put all the right music together. Uh, you, you did a, a family event of ours and my family always hired the same DJ year after year. And for whatever reason, they didn't have them that year. Yeah. And I told them that, you know, we, we got you to come out there mm -hmm. and they were super worried about playing yeah. the right music and i just i just didn't say anything i didn't even like yeah. i didn't even really defend you i'm like just wait till he gets here you know yeah and sure enough dude like they asked for one or two songs and then i don't even really remember them asking for more like you just had them dancing yeah. all freaking night and you then know? It, that was also coming from <clears throat> uh like i went in there i think uh you guys didn't really give me music either it was just a blank canvas yeah and, yeah uh, I think, but I think they'd ask like one or two, yeah, and you're yeah. like, and I think I, I know what okay, their yeah. what their what, vibe what to, is, what to do, yeah, yeah, and, and let me just hit them. <laughs> and, and that's as far that's that's how I always remember you. So it's funny yeah. to hear you be like, oh, I really had to learn a lot of lessons. But the yeah, fact man. that you were open mm -hmm. to all of it mm -hmm. and grew with it, like, I, I mean, you're 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 one of the best DJs that I know. Oh, you thank because you, you know how to put it and all. I'm yeah. I'm nowhere as good as like a lot of people that mm -hmm. I know, but uh, with what I do, I I think uh, it's a balance between yeah. being a dope dj yeah. um but i don't think that that's the most important thing no. um because you uh, i mean just on the dj but you, aspect, but you got a gift man because i've mm -hmm. never been to a wedding with you where mm -hmm. you didn't have the crowd hyped like 100 percent of the time or even when there was like a moment of like everyone calmed down and sat back down mm -hmm. dude it, not 10 minutes went by and everyone was right back on the dance floor i think it's a a fortunate though because when when i work with you typically the clients that we have most of them are super super outgoing yeah. and uh uh they're, they're, I, I remember one time uh because I, I don't play wham a lot yeah and i remember i forgot what wedding we did uh for, but it looked like a ranch we were like at a uh, it was in temecula or it was some kind of winery mm -hmm. and uh ceremony was outside and reception was inside kind of looked really rustic and anyways i dropped wham wake me up before you go go and mm -hmm. uh it, it was so cracking dude really? it was cracking <laughs> and every time and i tried to do that again yeah it uh, clears work. the dance floor bro <laughs> it's just one of those songs yeah. dude i was like man i wish i can have this moment every time but that just kind of goes to show Show you like the people that kind of hit you up or hit me up you know, there's there's do. a wedding you have to tell me about mm -hmm. um, there's a wedding that we shot together and it was a colombian couple mm -hmm. i know you remember and to me what stood out about the wedding as a photographer is it was a friday wedding um we we as photographers we started like at nine in the morning and we were actually scheduled to be there till midnight because at midnight they do the hora loca oh dude i remember now yeah <laughs> but uh -huh. but they actually uh be, because we were trying not to dude that was like a long day for us we Bro, were yeah we were super it's, long. It, it's longer than our usual contract uh -huh. so they actually pulled the hora loca back an hour like at 11 yeah and and they were cool. I think we left like at eleven thirty. But then you were, told me they were trying to go ham. Man. Well, in in the itinerary, they had a second DJ coming in at one, and they were gonna party till five. In the itinerary, it said till five a.m. Five a.m. was like I was not gonna like work clean out. up. No. So what happened? Because you ended up staying there longer. It just didn't make sense for me to leave. Yeah. And then they're then <clears throat> have them all be in limbo. Yeah. While the DJ comes up with all his equipment. Yeah. Um, who was I, the second dj i don't Do even know no? well i think he showed up and and you know he had, he pulled in his truck and like was trying to get in and I, I i remember i had to get up on an elevator and i was like look by the time he gets up here and sets up he, he told him to start at one he probably won't get done until like maybe 1 30 yeah you're better off just hiring me for another hour so i can keep the vibe going because yeah. if not it's, 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 if I'm gonna, eat, yeah. it's gonna yeah, die yeah, you know yeah. and then you know then there, there goes your party yeah and uh but yeah, that was a lit wedding, and I love their playlist, man. It was um, a little bit of everything. There was reggaeton, there was salsa, and I forgot. I think the groom side, or or I, I or my, obviously yeah. the, the bride side, yeah. but one side had a little bit of Mexican mm -hmm. in them too. So yeah. yeah, I got to play everything Latin. That's I'm, 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 I think if I were to be called a specialist in the music that I play, yeah. I think it would be the Latin, Latin. side. Yeah um it, because dude it we have rhythm man yeah, it's all yeah. it's all rhythm it's Whoa, all dancing do. i have no rhythm <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm just speaking in general in general, in general. Yeah. it's in there bro you just gotta find it <laughs> 
just gotta find it, man. Yeah, uh, I got lost a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I will dance with my wife, though. I love it. That's cool. Yeah, uh, you gotta keep dancing, bro. No, I just remember the next day, man. Mm-hmm. It was like I saw, I saw your IG stories going to like two in the morning. I was like, dang, dude, they kept them there all night. Yeah, yeah, bro, it was a long one, man. It was a long one, but dude, it was fun. Insane. It's fun when when people. It's it's kind of like a drug, dude. It's yeah. it's an addiction. Uh, kind of when you got it popping and everybody it, just everything that you think of that you're gonna play before you even play it you already know it's gonna be fire <laughs> it, it's it's a rush man yeah. it's like a it's like a comedian you know if he tells a joke and 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 he makes people laugh it yeah. makes them feel good about himself yeah. it's the same thing with the dj yeah. it's like it's that rush uh yeah. but you know at a wedding <laughs> yeah. uh you have a so you have like a team of people right uh, yeah Do, are you still doing that how's that working out it's a um the way that I, I i run it is like i let the dj i i only i have guys that are super experienced probably more experienced than me on my team reason being is because i just i, I love good work I take pride in what I do, yeah. uh, and they're out there representing me. Yeah. And you know, I've I've been to some where, um, uh, you know, who hasn't heard a a bad DJ before? Uh, it's kind of you know, it's rough, man. Uh, we're a lot of people think you know, it, uh, oh, let's just get this dude over here yeah. because he charged half the price. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you might get lucky, but you, you know, for a house party or something like yeah. that. But uh, and then at the end of the day, you still have Spotify. So yeah. like, it doesn't. I think, in my opinion, as long as everybody's kind of turned and having a good time, yeah. it doesn't matter who's mixing in the songs. You yeah. know, as long as you know, uh, you know, you can have someone with expertise and, yeah. and a background that kind of that knows how to set the mood and how to, like I said, cr- go to the vibe. Yeah. You know, uh, or you can do it yourself on Spotify. Um, but I do definitely believe in in having people that ha- that know how to do it. Yeah. And uh, the way I see it is like I'm doing this full time. Yeah. They have other stuff that they like doing. This is not what they're doing. Uh, uh, they they love to DJ, but they don't love the business. Uh, the aspect, business yeah, the yeah. business aspect of it. Yeah, and <clears throat> I'm learning to love the business aspect of it. It's <laughs> it's overwhelming, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um. I hopefully it gets big enough to where I don't have to worry so much about the business aspect of yeah. it, and I can just think of the ideas yeah. of like how to. Um, I don't like the marketing. Uh, I got to get used to doing the yeah. content. Yeah. And uh, I've come to a realization, like, I have to accept this yeah. because this is where it's at. This yeah. is where it's going. And you just said yourself, like, most of the stuff you do is is that kind of content. Yeah. That's your advertisement. Yeah. The the thought that I had advertisement was, was you pay for it, yeah. you know? Um, but no, it's it's content. Yeah. And that's definitely eye-opening. Not that me. you shouldn't pay for it. I mean, yeah. we, we plan on doing that too, yeah. but... Um, but it's I, a step. Yeah. It's yeah, just... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's just the next yeah. step yeah. that's that's what that yeah. is you know um and it's crazy because uh most of my stuff that i do is it's all referrals uh yeah. and i'm truly grateful for it for everybody that's uh ever hit me up but yeah. that's usually what happens when you put out good work you know people oh yeah. that's the go-to yeah, yeah, yeah. guy that's yeah. the go-to person you know um and uh, how, do you, how do you train a, a team to work under like your standards and your expectations though that's uh that's something that i'm going through right now um but a lot of it it also takes it from working with other people that have ran in multi-op and i was one of the guys that was just the dj just kind of getting sent out to do the event um a lot of it is is, it's do's and don'ts you know do the stuff that you like that you know apply it to yours and kind of learn as you go and you already know the stuff that you didn't like so don't apply that to your business. Yeah. Don't make that mistake. That's also key too. But it, I think the most important thing is learning from your failures. Yeah. And when once you learn from your failures, you'll be able to, uh, it's what you do after that. Yeah. If you're able to correct it and make yourself better, dude, you, you're, you're winning. You're, yeah. you're, you're headed in the right direction, yeah. you know? And uh, that's the same thing with running my multi-op <clears throat> right now. It, I, I, it's not perfect. But I, I, my, my guys are dope. My MCs are dope. The equipment's, you know, up to par. Yeah. My main thing is like, if you see me post content and you're looking for my, uh, my services and I'm not available, I still want to provide you with that service, yeah. you know, and it's going to be the same service yeah. as if I wasn't going to be there. But in order for me to do that, I'm still kind of, I have to make that, uh, uh, that relationship with the, with the client comfortable too, you know? Yeah. Um, and, 
I had another one uh, uh, not too long ago where I was already booked for December 5th and uh, another client around the same time hit yeah. me up. Like as I'm getting ready to sign one, someone's hitting me up and uh, it was when I was transferring over to a CRM. So all my uh, my 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 leads and stuff were yeah. not in my CRM yeah. yet. Yeah. They were almost there, but it was just I was grinding, bro, on the back end and it just kind of takes a long time. Yeah. And uh, it got to the point where I need to learn how to approach the client to where um uh they both want me there how do i approach both of those clients at the same time to kind of which one do i hit up first you know uh uh you know because it's yeah. in limbo dude and both of them are very eager to kind of like you know they want me there and yeah. then it got to the point where the, the the client that hit me up second was like well i'll give you the deposit right now we don't even have to meet yeah and i was like whoa i've never been hit with something like that yeah. before you know yeah. and i kind of just had to kind of like pump the brakes and yeah. and think about it and in my mind i was like well i can't really do that you know because the, the i i reached out to the other client i was like hey I have someone that's interested. Um, they're very eager, <laughs> and yeah. I, I I feel crappy, you know, like you know, pushing you. And maybe yeah. I didn't handle yeah. it the right way, saying it now, yeah. thinking about it. <laughs> but this is the first time that something like yeah. this has ever happened to yeah. me. And uh, but I was honest. I was like, hey, <clears throat> if if we if you're gonna pull the trigger, it needs to be now. Yeah. Uh, if not, not to worry. I got someone on my team yeah. that can definitely help you out. But hey you you hit me up first we hit it off and it and i felt bad too because i went to a comedy show yeah. and it turns out uh the well the comedy show that i went to it's a client of mine that i did back in the day yeah and he's doing comedy doing you know podcasts and all that that stuff and yeah. it's kind of cool you know because i seen him on this journey and it's like getting better and getting better getting better but anyways uh his sister was there and uh she was like oh we're getting married we hit it off we had drinks with them me and my girl had drinks yeah. with them and um but I, I was very adamant about not talking business, yeah. you know, because yeah. we're drinking yeah. and I'm not going to remember everything that we said. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess she somewhat implied that I was going to do it and I was going to yeah. reserve the date for her. But I told them, you know, like, no, nah, I reserve yeah. as soon as I get that retainer, you know, yeah. um, because, you know, anything goes. Yeah. So. I kind of did take a step back. I did talk to the client. I was like, hey, if it's yeah. going to happen, let's make it happen, you know. Yeah. Um, and then with the other client, yeah, I was I was honest with them too. I broke yeah. it down. I was like, I'm sorry. I was kind of overwhelmed with yeah. uh with with your eagerness to book me. Uh, it turns out that I'm not available. I did tell them about the 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 scheduling conflict yeah. because it was an error on my end because when I did look into the calendar, it yeah. did say that I was open or that I didn't have any leads for yeah. that day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, man. Um. So I, I sat down with them, I talked with them, and um, they're still gonna go with you know my my, my team, and uh, it's just a matter of how uh, it's, it's all been a learning yeah. experience. Yeah, kind of learning how to approach, how to approach all those yeah, situations. Man. And I feel yeah. like I hit a lot of bumps on the way yeah. there, dude. But it was uh, dude. That stuff never that stuff never ends, man. Yeah. You know that you're always. I mean, I've, I've been photographing weddings for ten years, and every year there's new situations that yeah. that come up and and i mean it's great that you know the more time we put into it you you kind of learn how to approach situations mm -hmm. but the situations are ever changing man yeah. there's always something different something you haven't done some you know someone throws something at you where you're like whoa <laughs> i don't know exactly what to do here you know yeah so you got you always got to be thinking about that stuff yeah you know? and uh yeah just be ready mm -hmm. be ready because that's what makes you uh, better at it, too. Yeah. It's because uh, you, you just have to stay on your toes. And yeah. I, I learned that, you know, just playing baseball, playing yeah. sports. Uh, and that's a reference that you can kind of just apply yeah. to anything that you do. Every this this format, yeah. you can take it and apply it. If you're if you're smart enough, you can apply it to whatever you're doing, especially yeah. if you're like an entrepreneur, especially in this industry, you know, or even if you're just starting a business. Yeah. Um, because I wasn't here, you know, it, dude, if you would have told me when I was. 21 like hey leo you're gonna be a a, a wedding dj mc yeah. i would have been like hot ah, that's stupid yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know and and even right now thinking about it you know but this is how i pay my bills yeah, you know? yeah. and um it, there's been a lot of ups there's been a lot of downs bro but i think at the end of the day it's all been a learning yeah. experience yeah. and especially right now because I went from having a, a really, really good December. I think most of us in the industry have a really good December or it stays relatively busy because yeah. it's not just weddings, it's corporate events too. And um, yeah, so I, I can't remember how many events I did, but uh, it was a good month. 
I splurged a little bit, yeah. got everybody Christmas presents, yeah. and not even realizing, like, you know, like, what about yeah, January? Yeah, you think about January. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and January, I, I kid you not, I did maybe two events, yeah. you know, and one of them was just an MC. I helped one of my buddies, yeah. MC, so there was no money there, yeah. you know? Usually with one, I, I can make enough to kind of, like get by and, yeah, and yeah. find where to spend my money yeah but uh yeah dude I, and then it sucks because that's this is uh, in january everything renews too so my bills just get a little <laughs> bit more bigger you yeah, know yeah. and and i just joined the crm too so that bills there uh i have an application which is kind of cool uh i think it helps uh everybody do their job better yeah. uh because it, it's an event planning yeah. slash music what is planning it? it's called uh vibo vibo yeah and uh it's new in the in the in the it's a game changer, yeah, bro. If yeah. I meet my clients with with this in hand, uh, the chances of me booking them are significantly higher because I feel like uh, this technology is not uh, it's relatively new. Yeah, it still has a little hiccups. Uh, I can I'm I'm writing down everything because uh, I talked with the uh, the creator of the, the, yeah. the app and um, he there it's a it's a work in progress, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, he seriously wants kind of input from everybody that kind of stays yeah. frequently busy what is with it? it what is it exactly um okay so i can kind of show you right here too we'll kind of look at it and, and talk about it vibo yeah it's it's event planning for for your clients uh at a wedding so i create a an event for them <clears throat> uh invite them as host and it's integrated with uh see i have some clients right here that already put their pictures and as you can see they already put songs too so you create like a profile for them? Yeah, and they can share this with uh, their wedding guests to mm -hmm. pick out uh, dance songs. But I, I mean, this mm. is also, uh, you know. Uh, you can do you, much more with it. Yeah, use yeah. at your own uh, leisure, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, you don't, obviously don't want to give it to all your, your wedding guests, yeah. you know. But maybe like your friend or something to yeah. kind of help you pick music, say if you're not a music head. And then it has all the essential stuff that... Um, Maybe your wedding coordinator would give you, but it's just all the essential stuff that I need, yeah, you know, for and, the day. Yeah, and so it, you fill out all their information, <clears throat> has uh, the date of the wedding, the location of the wedding, uh, mm. the arrival time, if they want to put their social media input yeah. in there. Um, I, as far as other vendors, I had a huge list, but all I really need for that day is just event planner who's yeah. in charge here uh photographer and videographer mm -hmm. because we need to be on the same page yeah. throughout the yeah. entire night you know yeah um i can't be announcing stuff and y'all are not ready yeah. you know yeah. um and that's also something that i didn't know back in the day you know it's just something that you need to yeah. kind of pick up as you kind of go i mean besides the wedding coordinator ev every time i go to a wedding whether there's one or not mm -hmm. the first person i walk right up to is the dj meet him because he's mm -hmm. he's i mean he's pretty much running the show yeah know? yeah and and it took me a while for me to to understand that but mm. even now in my packages i i put uh event planning um and i i emphasize we help with coordination but yeah. we're not coordinators yeah, you know yeah. um but if i don't see uh the coordinator yeah then. if i don't see structure yeah. then i'm gonna go in there and kind of yeah. help y'all out with it yeah. because it's uh, at the end of the day bro I, every, we're all a team and we're all trying mm -hmm. to look good so if I can go above and beyond so everybody looks good, yeah. it's just going to help us all out, you it's know, true, at man. the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it just has all the essential stuff, you know, processional stuff. And then at the end of it, um, it creates a PDF with all the information in there. And uh, I tell my clients, for the most part, I don't really care what time things start. Yeah. I care of the order of things, you yeah. know, because... <clears throat> At the end of the day, most weddings are not super, super punctual unless like yeah. the venue and the team have their shit together. Yeah. And and that's rare because there's so many moving parts. There's yeah. always going to be some kind of hiccup. And it might not even be like the team. It might be a guest or yeah. some, somebody forgot something, you know, somebody forgot their veil or, yeah. you know, something like that. But that's just the um, that's just the 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 planning. Now, the music yeah. is the cool part, bro. So if we go to the music. They'll be able to, you know, pick all their music. So let's just go straight up to, um, let's see, first dance. So I already have some created playlists on here, so the client can kind of, the client can kind of go in here, say if they don't have any idea, yeah, you know. And there's already songs in here, and oh, then they can, nice. and then they they can pick the song. And if say they already know what song it is, you can just search it on search YouTube. It. That's cool. And then just add it. Yeah, you add it to your thing and. 
it makes it very convenient. That's great. They're doing yeah. they're doing a lot of the the work for you, so you come Dude, more prepared. And on the back end, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, okay, so just uh, I I I don't know how many DJs you've ever talked to on, yeah. on your podcast, but what maybe uh, two two. This is, this is you're the second okay, one. <laughs> cool, man. Hopefully, maybe more. Uh, but on the back end, organizing. I know for you, like after you're done shooting a wedding yeah. your work's not done right no, no. no, no, no on no. ours too like people think we <clears throat> show up and uh, we just start playing music no yeah. there's preparation that goes into this oh, yeah. you know yeah. like the music their playlist um so this uh the actual software is integrated uh to where it looks the files actually up or anything that sounds similar to to what is in their playlist and yeah. automatically creates that playlist with the physical song yeah. in the software that I yeah. use to DJ. So we're talking about hours and hours and hours of time saved, um, which I, for most people, uh, uh, f- you know, that, that they have their own business and, and that are really, really busy. Yeah. I can, I can optimizing your time uh, is super, super crucial. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I remember even like, <laughs> this is going to be the more, uh, the irresponsible person in me talking right now <laughs> um, but there's been times where like you know like say uh, for instance uh, i had all the music ready by the way but um it was a perfect example i did go to one love on on friday and then on saturday i had a wedding in diamond bar and um it's, music was already ready but i still kind of woke up like very kind of like took me a while to kind of you know yeah. get going yeah, yeah, yeah. but imagine if uh I ever ran into a situation where they give me the music late because yeah. it does happen sometimes yeah. as much as i emphasize like seven days before two yeah. weeks before yeah, it still get it done it still happens yeah. some people just it doesn't click in their head you know we have that with the schedule all the time yeah, yeah. they give it to us like the day before yeah dude like, oh. I, I hate that shit so <laughs> much you know because i'm I, dude we take pride in doing this yeah, stuff yeah, you know yeah. and, and it's like we want to do a good job for yeah. you but uh there's been times where like you know say if i had a long day before mm-hmm. and a music still hasn't come in it just adds to that pressure yeah. of of performing yeah. and doing a good job so what happened and, when you went to the wedding hungover um <laughs> just kidding no, no well i didn't go in hungover i was You're, like just tired. tiptoeing around yeah. no i was just tired man it was it was a long day dude festivals are long um I have gone into wedding hungovers before. Uh, I don't normally drink at my events, but say yeah. if I see you there, like I, I would grab a beer with you. You know, have a. Oh, you won't have, see me drinking at a wedding. You won't. You won't drink at all. No, nah, no. Nah. Nah. Is it okay for me to drink there? I. You know what? I don't have anything against anybody, any vendor drinking. Honestly, it's just that's Be able all, to handle your shit. <laughs> it's, it's just always been my own approach. You yeah. know what I mean? My own approach is. Um, I guess my idea behind it is you, you know, my, my client might be like, dude, have a shot with us or have a beer with us. He might be that type of client. Yeah. He won't get offended if I say, nah, we're good. You know, he won't get mad, Mm -hmm. but there's other people watching us and there might be, there might be a guest who doesn't like drinking and they're considering uh, us it, it, you know that's yeah. these are the things that go through my head no, so for me doesn't it's go through my head for, for me it's it's just it, <laughs> it, you cool, know though. it's my yeah. professional yeah, thing sure. that i have that yeah. i just don't drink yeah. you know what i mean yeah so i don't think it necessarily looks bad or anything it's just yeah. something I've, I've always stuck yeah. to i just don't drink at weddings yeah for me i think uh well, dude, the whole DJ. I'll go with you after. Have some <laughs> after, drinks, yeah, though. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, well, not an excuse to drink, yeah. but it does help sometimes yeah. to kind of like, and yeah. and it does sound like an excuse, but just even when I'm like working like at a club, yeah. you have to kind of put yourself well, in. Well, yeah, it and loosens like, you up a little bit. Yeah, it gets it flowing. Yeah, yeah no, I'm with it, man. I'm yeah. Like I said, I'm not even, I'm not against it. Yeah. And, you know, don't, you should never feel bad for drinking at a yeah. wedding. That's No, no yeah. I, and, I, and, I, and I don't, and I yeah. don't. But it's always nice to hear other people's uh, uh, perspective yeah, about yeah. it. You know, because there's, I've heard from countless yeah. people that say that they don't. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people, especially as <clears throat> DJs though. Yeah. Um, I'm like, dude, just be. Do, do a good job, yeah, man. Have fun yeah, with it, you yeah, know? But do yeah, a good job, yeah. you know? Like, have... It's like... Uh, I, uh, I, I, I Obviously, most people do, but I listen to Joe Rogan's yeah, podcast, and yeah. he was talking about, yeah, sometimes, like, I, I don't get fucked up, but yeah. I, I'll have a shot before yeah. I go on, you know? Yeah. Kind of, yeah, it kind of gets me there, you I know? mean, it, you, you shouldn't stop yourself from being yourself. Uh, yeah. Who I am has been the person yeah. that just... I don't, well, that's why... You know. That's why oh, I'm sorry, but that's why I have tattoos on my yeah, hand, yeah. because... 
uh dude and i forget this because times have changed yeah i think it's okay to have tattoos on your hands yeah but when i got it <laughs> it was yeah. like was no tattoo. one's gonna hire you no yeah. you're you're gonna be a failure for yeah. the rest of your life and uh that has changed that isn't that crazy how that's changed yeah People dude are cops yeah. i mean profession yeah. you know I work in government and it's crazy to see some of these people tagged yeah. up and you're like, these, this is not <laughs> the industry you would expect any of this from. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No. Yeah. I think, uh, as long as you know, it's not anything yeah. too wild yeah. on, on your body. Yeah. But, um, that was the mentality I went into it. I was like, I'm going to work for myself. Uh, and this is just kind of a, a reminder to kind of, <clears throat> to stay doing it. Yeah. And I kind of forgot dude, because like nobody, really cares anymore yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. it's just it's part of my style you know? yeah all right yeah. and um that's also uh how do you feel about um uh, calling it quits one day like do you have a time frame or or what's for weddings the, or, or what's... what's the next step or what what are you gonna do what what's... i think that's a big question for yeah. for photographers that's yeah. always a, a big thing you know what i mean like what's your what's your exit plan right yeah um and i and i haven't even thought about it I really haven't but <clears throat> we don't have out. honestly man we don't have an exit plan i'm mm -hmm. gonna shoot as long as i'm capable of shooting weddings and i'm getting hired to shoot weddings uh -huh. i'm probably gonna keep doing it because i really really enjoy it um something that i can see happening less of as gabriel gets older is maybe i won't take on as many just right to to not sacrifice the weekends yeah but there's also going to be a time where he uh leaves our house man and then and then i'll have Probably more time been, again yeah. to do it anyways yeah. right so yeah. as long as i'm shooting uh, uh capable of shooting weddings i'm going to be doing them yeah uh we have other other uh aspirations there's yeah. other things that we want to do yeah, definitely that uh, that could be i mean we don't know they could be um something that that takes over our life completely right mm -hmm. uh we're growing this multimedia business right now and it's still in its infant stage we're just getting jobs here and there who's to say that that ends up taking over weddings right. i don't know mm -hmm. um marie and i have um these um these aspirations to like own a small business who's right. to say that that's something that's going to take over our that's lives cool, 10 20 years from now and we're not shooting weddings who knows but yeah. right now the way i feel is i love photography and i'm gonna keep doing it as long as my hands work and my brain works you know mm -hmm. well my that's, brain doesn't always work but <laughs> yeah, my brain works half the time <laughs> I, I, dude honestly a, a lot of the time uh what i've realized too it just comes to you just kind of second nature yeah i remember when i was uh and i keep bringing him up uh alex but yeah. I, it got to the point where when we were working together he can be across on the other side of yeah. the room and just yeah. kind of look at me and i know what to do you know or like say if you were to get on the yeah. mic you know to hype people up yeah. i know how to play with the track to yeah. where it accents yeah you know that production as i think that just sound. comes with with working with somebody for so long i mean maria and i yeah. vibe like that together at weddings yeah. all the time we always know i miss that dude. yeah i really yeah. do because yeah. a lot of the time uh, i'm working these events i'll work it with either someone that's not familiar yeah you know unless uh, I, I i've also come to realization that maybe i might step back from the dj mm -hmm. aspect of it and let the djs handle it yeah. and i can MC because creating content has become important too yeah. and i can't do it all dude yeah. and then the lighting production aspect of it has also expanded too yeah. man um and everything, uh, I control literally all my lights, uh, DMX, and yeah. I use uh, an application on my on, on my iPad that's integrated with the interface uh, with DMX software. Yeah. And uh, doing that, DJing, MCing, yeah. trying to go out there and coordinate, it's kind of hard to do, man. Yeah. Um, and that's why it was easier with just putting everything on sound mode. But but then there is no production. There is, yeah. it doesn't make sense a lot of the times, you know. Um, you know, there's certain songs that you can definitely uh, uh, accent them, you know, uh, that have buildups. You can strobe mm -hmm. lights uh, for a first dance. You can put spotlights on the bride yeah. and groom and you can do all these things. But <clears throat> it's kind of hard to run the show 100% uh, yourself. Yeah. And that's something that I've come into realization. So the next step for me is probably give... Uh, my guys an opportunity to dj with me more often um because it's gonna help us both grow you yeah. know and then i i think at at that point it's uh yeah i, I told you it's just riding the wave you mm -hmm. know see where it takes me um mm -hmm. i definitely do want to grow my goal for this year is i uh, see i already have about 30 35 yeah lead, uh, 30 close 35 leads give or take um i want to double that yeah. you know by summer you yeah. know and then by by that point i, I already want to start working on next year yeah. you know yeah and um 
and just how am I going to keep growing? And yeah. uh, one thing that I realized just even sitting here talking to you is content yeah. and advertisement <clears throat> the, and what that word actually means yeah. to some people. Uh, because to me, that that's what I meant by content. And, and yeah. then the whole advertisement thing. Well, I think like, oh, well, a Yelp and you pay for ads or or you go on. It's called Wedding Pro now. Have you heard of it? Mm -mm. It's uh, Wedding Wire and the Knot together oh really yeah and uh i'm out of the loop man. yeah you're so you don't even okay so <laughs> no, i've been i've been thinking not. about yeah. i've been thinking about using that stuff but you you gotta fork over yeah. some money to to get there yeah i've had you know i've had uh friends use uh the knot and it worked i've also had friends use the knot and they felt like they wasted their money uh honestly i'm always going to take the approach of uh doing everything i can without paying for it first because you have so many tools at your disposal uh -huh. that you know you can use um if you have the money to just be throwing out the advertisement it's yeah. probably less work for you period yeah uh, but i don't mind putting in the work i mean yeah. it's it's part of uh um, it's part of the fun for me if anything yeah. you know yeah. yeah and it's more personal to me yeah. like when i when and i'm creating those stories and stuff i'm all right yeah. but, you know but, no, it's but it's more you, personal it's yeah. it's i'm behind the screen i hate yeah. i actually joked about it on, on uh uh, the the questions things that I did on IG stories, mm -hmm. a bot answered a question. They're mm -hmm. like, "Hey, this doesn't pertain to your oh. question, but did you know you can go to my YouTube and da 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 da?" And I'm just it, it, and I wrote back. I'm like, "Hey, how about you be a real person? You know what I mean?" <laughs> to me, when people are asking me those questions yeah. and I'm answering back, there's there's a there's a guy behind the screen actually talking to you. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So that that I rather keep it personal that way. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a uh, something that I. I I'm still like learning about yeah, yeah. all that stuff just because uh, I remember because with my business, my Instagram, my personal Instagram kind of took over the uh, mm -hmm. uh, got took the over business. by the business. Yeah. 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 And um, I want to separate them. But at the same time. Uh, or maybe I should just keep this one as my business yeah. one and then create a new that's one. What I ended, that's what I ended up doing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I had my Del Toro photo was my personal yeah. and it just turned into all business and, yeah. I, and I have a personal one. And the only reason I, I started a personal one mm -hmm. was I wanted somewhere to share just like fun photos that I took. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. And, yeah. and uh, the Del Toro photo one, it's still personal, but we just stick you know yeah. it's for me it's about consistency yeah. like when you go to del toro photo you're only going to see wedding stuff mm -hmm. and and we're that's our audience there's potential yeah. clients yeah. so yeah yeah and, and for me it's some mixture right now and it's it kind of sucks because uh i like to do a lot of fun stuff yeah. but also stupid stuff too yeah. you know yeah. uh like i, I smoke weed yeah. <laughs> but you what? know what yeah, yeah can you, you tell <laughs> are we high right now <laughs> yeah. i am a little bit <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just one of those things, man, where everybody has an opinion. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, regardless of yeah. what your opinion is, you know, I am who I am. Yeah. But I don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. Uh, and I really do take pride in my work. And I do believe everybody. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe I, I I can cater to most yeah. people, yeah. you know. So, but not everybody thinks the same. So it, it's always a balancing act of what's appropriate, yeah. what's not appropriate. Yeah. I just don't want to worry about that anymore. Like one is just yeah. gonna be, yeah. I can still do my personal, yeah. you know, pictures, um, but I don't want to think about like, oh, should I post this? Should I yeah. not? Should I not? Should I? Should I not? I I, I hate that because. Uh, um, even it has that like that feature you can yeah. post to your close friends um what if you make a mistake yeah. and like you yeah. just share it you know with the whole world yeah <laughs> and they, I, I think over time man that stuff uh gets a little easier like uh you know you're as long as you're always being you know we've always been true to ourselves about our beliefs right. and when, what we think uh on our, our on our stuff you'll never really see us post like religious stuff mm -hmm. uh but one of the things that were a big um um we're big on is like uh, like equal equal rights right yeah so um we i think for i don't know if it's still on there but we put a rainbow on our, on our instagram account because mm -hmm. we wanted you know the lgbt community to know that we supported them yeah and, for sure and, and you know uh, -huh. uh and and that was a question that came up at first mm -hmm. where we were like do you want to do that we have a lot of current clients that oh, but are, that's a that's a good one i think that one you should yeah yeah, yeah. but but the same yeah. question comes uh -huh. up you know you start thinking about this yeah. stuff and the end result was when marie and i talked about it is you know what we've been doing this long enough and and i feel this is why i say where i think it gets a little easier we've been doing this long enough that we don't give a fuck about what 
those clients think you know mm. because this is what we believe okay. and if we're going to lose some clients or potential so clients down it. the line <laughs> we rather work with those people yeah. anyways so yeah. i think for in your case i'm not saying like yeah. put videos of you smoking weed but i no. think it'll get easier where when you do <laughs> people are <laughs> I, no, think, I, would, but, I would never do but that but i think down the line if, if you were to share some of those things and, uh -huh. and people already know you for those things yeah. then you're going to get clients who just don't care about that anyways yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. we're in california it's, yeah. legal, it's legal and it's slowly becoming this thing yeah. that like dude yeah. even now when i hear people uh i work in government right yeah. and i hear people have conversations about it mm -hmm. and in the past the conversations were always like oh yeah i don't i don't like that stuff and you know <laughs> you hear that more now those same people yeah they don't know they're not necessarily saying that yeah but they don't even know how to say they're against it because yeah. it's legal how do you even like have those conversations and you yeah. hear people just kind of like avoiding the i don't like that they're just mm -hmm. you know it's like well you don't have to like it but people can smoke now and it's do, it do is you want to hear a is. funny story of course totally, <laughs> totally not relevant to anything we're talking about other than weed yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh this past uh uh new year's eve uh before that uh out in san Bernardino, there's a place where there's a few places out there where they sell pretty much weed at like yeah. wholesale price yeah. um and that's the problem with uh <clears throat> uh uh, a lot of these dispensaries is just getting really, really expensive yeah. when you're buying this stuff, you know. Um, and I'm not gonna say how much I I picked up. I'm not gonna say how much it costs or yeah. anything like this, but it it is relatively cheaper. And uh, so I bought a lot. It was probably like the most I've ever bought yeah. before. You yeah. know, I think the the I actually looked it up the other day because it was the most I've ever paid for yeah. it, and it was one of those. Uh, uh, how much can I get pulled over with and yeah, I'll be okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Uh, and it was, I think an, an ounce is uh, 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 something like 23 grams or something yeah. like that. But anyway, so I picked up a lot and then uh, had New Year's with the family. And then me and my girl decided to go to my friend's house. We didn't drive, by the way, yeah. Uber, Uber back. Yeah. Um, and on the way back home, um, we uh, she, she decided to call it a night and... Uh, I, I we're spending the night at my parents' house and uh, <laughs> I I bring all my materials to roll a joint. Yeah. I just learned how to roll joints, yeah. you know. And uh, so I roll it joint and I smoke it, but I leave all my stuff there. Yeah. And then the next day, it's all gone. It's all gone. And uh, I didn't realize this until the next day in the evening when I wanted to roll another yeah, joint. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I had I had a lot and I was yeah. like, I'll smoke another joint. Yeah. And then and then at that point. I realized, like, where is my stuff at, yeah. you know? And uh, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. And it turns out my dad took it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then in my mind, the, the first thing that goes in my mind, well, I'm mad. I'm mad. I was like, why is he taking my shit? Yeah. You know, like, that's not his yeah. or whatever. Or, you know, come talk to me. You yeah. know, get mad at me. You yeah, know, yeah. give it back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or if not, you know, throw it away, yeah. you know. But it just... Uh, the night, but since it was already nighttime, yeah. I had time to sleep it off yeah, and yeah. the anger went away yeah. and, uh, one day goes by, doesn't tell me anything about it. Two days goes by, doesn't tell me anything yeah. about it. And on the third day, I'm like, yo, you can give me my stuff back or you throw it away. <clears throat> and he goes, what stuff? And at that point I'm like, come on, let's be adults here. Yeah, you know? Yeah. I was like, I left it out. You're right. I shouldn't have left it out. Yeah. But you woke up early in the morning and you put it away and sorry, I was a little lit and yeah, you know, I forgot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we started having like that conversation, uh, the right and wrong, yeah, and the do's yeah, and don'ts yeah, yeah. of drugs, and um, he's coming at it from a perspective of like, uh, I've never experienced it. I've yeah. always heard yeah. other people talk yeah. about it. So his idea of like marijuana is like, dude, it makes people crazy. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I know some crazy ass people with that stuff that's been on that stuff that makes them really, really, really yeah. crazy. I was like, well, you've obviously never even tried it, you know. I was like, um, if you, uh, <laughs> and this was what kind of gave him my, made him give him my stuff back. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was funny because I was like, well, when you when you go out and you drink with your buddies, there's always that one buddy that every time he drinks, he fights. Yeah. Sooner or later, he either a stops drinking and yeah. hangs out with you guys or he, you 
cut them off from your life. Yeah. But that's not the alcohol. That's the person that's yeah. making them crazy. Yeah. And with weed, I don't even think that there is that person. The person is just crazy regardless. But yeah. I, the people that I know that do it is it's crazy. The community is like love yeah. and, and yeah. chill, chill vibes. And yeah. it's fun. But yeah, we had an adult conversation about weed, bro. And he ended up giving me my stuff back. Yeah. So now he's like all I mean he has it. I'm I, slowly I'm gonna get him You're to get him to smoke with you. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna happen, yeah, man. Gonna, uh, Sounds like it's man. headed there. He was complaining about his back the other day. I was like, I know something though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it was so funny. I felt like a kid again, yeah. you know. Because yeah. hey, the last time uh, someone's taking my yeah. drugs away was my dad and he threw it away. That's hilarious. Yeah. And I was like in high school, man. <laughs> yeah. well, well listen, man, uh I've I've watched you grow this business. I've watched you become like this really great DJ. I've known you for years now. You've Thanks, always bro. been a good dude. We always have really great conversations. And uh I'm I'm excited to see what like what's gonna come next for you, man. I'm yeah. excited to watch you Likewise, continue man. to grow this business. Let's, let's all grow, dude. And work yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. And there's a few people that we mess around with. Um I'm open arms to anybody yeah. that does good work yeah. and just wants to get better because mm. this this industry is a is a very fruitful one if yeah. you know what you're doing, you know. Yeah. And for those that are uh, stuck in limbo, not sure if they should go all in or uh, you know do something else. Mm-hmm. You told me before, like you can't go into this. Uh, the last time I saw you, you can't go into this not loving it. Yeah. You just can't. Yeah, you have to find something to love about it because if you don't uh then don't do it it's not yeah. for you you're gonna end up quitting it's gonna anything. show it's gonna yeah. show in your work it, it will that's show. what i always say it's gonna yeah. show in your work you yeah know? and uh yeah and let's just keep each other motivated man that's what i'm i'm here for and yeah and i think i'm gonna try to get into this platform too and just talk to people in general yeah. that are in this industry if not even in this industry that have their own business yeah. because like i said you can take a lot of this stuff and be able mm-hmm. to apply it yeah. to a business yeah. man and uh and it's just one of those things. I wish I, this community was something that was available yeah. to us when yeah. we were, you know, oh, gro- for yeah, 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 coming up. Yeah, coming up dude. <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy, man, yeah. because I've taken a lot of this in, man. And it's yeah. like, it hits you like, oh, yeah. shit. Like, I know where they're coming from. Or like, oh, I remember doing that yeah. back in the yeah. day, you know. So, yeah. So yeah. Cool. Well, let's do this again, man. Yeah, we'll have cool. To have it come on and, and we'll get some updates on what's been going on and just... uh and uh just do it again sounds good bro. all right, all right man. man thanks for yeah. being on dude all right. all right guys thanks again for listening to another episode of the wedding photo podcast uh if you want to reach out to me you can find me on instagram at wedding photo podcast you can also find me on twitter at del toro photo and you can join our ever-growing facebook group all the links are in the show notes below you can also find um, all of leo's links below you can also find him at rkeventslighting.com and i'll also have a link to his instagram radio clash Um, all the links will be in the show notes below so you can go check him out and his work and uh, just see what a great dude he is Uh, so go give him a follow Uh, And before I leave, I just want to mention again that I've teamed up with Narrative Publisher. It's a desktop app to help you uh, blog easier, faster. Uh, It helps you create these beautiful blogs and get them out to any web host that you use uh, a lot easier. So if you want to try it out, you can try it for free. Um, If you decide you want to um, purchase it, you can get 15% off using my code, Del Toro Photo. If you use my affiliate link, you'll be supporting uh, me and this podcast um and if you want to just support the podcast in general i'd really love it if you went and gave uh this podcast a five-star rating left a review and just share this podcast with your friends because we want to grow and we want more people listening and we just want to um you know we want to grow our businesses together and um hopefully this is a podcast that is out there uh helping others it's helping me grow just by doing the podcast and and um and, and so I just want to continue to put out anything that would help uh, anyone out there grow their business. So thanks again, guys, for listening to another episode. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one.